welcome to Reading Hour with Ka Tao. On this segment with our special guest, Yvonne Chan, we're going to dive into the world of Wordsworth with his poem, London, 1802. But first, let's dissect some of his enthralling vocab. Ahem. So, what is, who is this Milton that Wordsworth is speaking of? Well, Belle, I hate to interrupt you, but it's John Milton, a 17th century English poet who typically wrote about freedom and self-determination. Hmm, let's take a look at lines two and four, words Fen and Bower. Fen is a moss prone to flooding. Now, for the word Bower, think nature. Lush trees and a shady sanctuary. For the record, kids, this isn't what you think it is. Now let's hear a round of applause for our guest of honor, Yvonne Chan. Milton, thou shouldst be living at this hour. England hath need of thee. She is a fen of stagnant waters, outer sword and pen and fireside. The heroic wealth of Holland Bower have forfeited their ancient English dower of England inward happiness. We are selfish men. Oh, raise us up, return to us again, and give us manners, virtue, freedom, power. Thy soul was like a star, and doubt apart. Thou hast a voice whose sound was like the sea, pure as the naked heavens, majestic, free. So didst thou travel on life's common way in cheerful godliness, and yet thy heart the lowliest duties on herself did lay. That was beautiful, Ivan. Let's hear it again. Milton! Thou shouldst be living at this hour. England hath need of thee. She is a fen of stagnant waters, outer sword and pen, fireside the heroic wealth of Holland Bower, have forfeited their ancient English dower of England inward happiness. We are selfish men. <laughs> Raise us up, return to us again. Give us manners, virtue, freedom, power. Thy soul was like a star and doubt apart. Thou hast a voice whose sound was like the sea. Peers naked heavens, majestic, free. So didst thou travel on life's common way in cheerful godliness, and yet thy heart, the lowliest duties on herself, did lay. Oh, I mean, this just gets to me every time, you know, Belle? It's just so inspiring to the human race. Oh. Let's head back to the studio for an all-exclusive interview with Yvonne Chan, Wordsworth extraordinaire. Take it away, Belle. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into this. So Yvonne, what are you feeling about the speaker? He seems very passionate. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful, man. Last weekend, I was in downtown Santa Cruz, and I saw this child. He really brought in the inner Milton in me. I, I told him not to be like stagnant Oh, waters. yeah, 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 yeah. Those words are so eloquent. They speak to me, you know? Words with use of metonymy brings greater meaning to normal words in the list of grievances. He uses words such as fan and bower to symbolize nature. Words with puts nature in diametrical opposition to the industrialized society of London. Yeah, he really enjams the lines together to display his contempt for rigid poem structure. This adds to his nonconformist tone. I totally agree that Wordsworth broke away from conventional poetry. I noticed this poem has a Petrarchian sonnet. However, the meter is irregular. Wordsworth criticizes specific characteristics of London through his use of symbolism. The altar symbolizes church, the sword symbolizes military, the pen symbolizes literature, the fireside symbolizes home, the hall symbolizes home also, and bower symbolizes nature as the speaker describes England. 
Towards the end of the poem, Wordsworth really hits home with his love for Milton, stating that his soul was like a star. His voice was like the sea, pure as naked heavens, majestic, and as you remember. <laughs> yeah, those similes are pretty deep. Great. So, well, we're done with Yvonne Chan. Now it's time to recap with Katie. Do you hear that? You hear that, kids? That is the power of poetry. We'll catch you next time on Reading Hour. We'll leave you with this. Don't be a stagnant water in the pool of life.